all know that North Myrtle Beach is the place to be if you want to experience our state dance, Shag. And we all know that before 1968, the name North Myrtle Beach didn't even exist. But here are some facts I bet you didn't know. We were right across the street from the theater, our first theater we had there. That was a big thing for us kids. We went every Saturday to the movies, you know, take a quarter and go, 10 cents to get in, and then we could get goobers <laughs> and something to drink and double feature cowboy movies, and it was wonderful. Uh, and Grady Johnson um, was managed that theater for a very long time. So in the summer when mom and daddy were working so hard and we were little, um, we would spend a lot of time at the movies. And Mr. Johnson, when a new movie came in, which was once a week, you got a new one and then it played three times a day, um, he would let us go. We had to pay for the first movie. And then we could go in any time and watch all the others and he would never make us pay again until the movie changed. So consequently, my sister and I, the closest one to me, knew almost verbatim many movies and those wonderful musicals of the 50s and so forth. It was, it was just great. But Hazel was the thing that really tore us up. Harley's restaurant, one thing I remember, see the piers were gone, we had two piers. And those big timbers, some of them washed right in Ireland's front door, and I don't know how in the world they worked it around and got in the kitchen and everything. There was timbers everywhere. And a lot of, a lot of uh, refrigerators was on the back, you know, floated well, still had eggs on them, it wasn't even broken. And uh, it, it was, it's just amazing to think. Of course, we had to have the National Guards in because we had a lot of looting. And, uh, and me living on the highway, nobody thought I had damage, but had water in the house. Had, all, had to replace all the beds and everything. Had it up to the mattress. And the highway washed away right in front of my house. And see, that creek came through, and when it, when it went back, that's when it did the damage. That's when everything was torn up. You remember the Ellsworth, you don't remember it. It's not Brycliffe, anyway. We started at Conway and we couldn't get out and some fellow from Myrtle Beach Medicine said, you can't go, so I pulled in at Ellsworth's house. Yeah, a, that house is still there now and it's, I don't know what it is. But we stayed there and got around this chimney, had a big fireplace and waited till it was over and then we got out and saw all the damage. But it was some, something. One house was left on ocean, uh, Windy Hill Beach, and, the, and there was an elderly couple in it, and they stayed in there through the, and there was the only house left, and it, well, they had to build a way for them to get down because it had all the steps, you know, it was on a two-story. But they survived, they stayed in the house with only one left. I mentioned to you that Hubert Anderson was a good friend of mine. He was a county policeman at the time, and he was friends with the people that, uh, at the uh, North North Beach Airport. And they had some extra land over there. And uh, he made arrangements for five or six people to have gardens there. The gardens were like over 200 feet long, and everybody had five rows. And we rented the land from the county for 10% of what we produced, and they would take that to the prison farm and feed the uh, inmates. And so when I was gardening, I had five rows over 200 feet long. We grew everything I think that you can grow. And I had a tiller, and uh, we, uh, we, we we had a good time with that. I I grew enough for everybody in my you know in my com, uh, community then. When we came down, there were very few houses, very few buildings. Uh, there was the uh, Mar Lane Motel next to us, but there was very very few. Uh, it was uh, down on the marsh. We would go down, and it was just so beautiful. And now it's completely full of houses. Down at the inlet was just so beautiful. Um, 
so different from now. I think it was it, simply wonderful back then, but with the growth that we have, I think um, it's to be expected and uh, it's very rewarding. Uh, we have more people, uh, we have more buildings, of course, and, and that's important. But you knew everybody back then. Um, it, was, it was just a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, place to be. I really feel if you ever come to the beach, you never want to leave. I think this is why so many people visit, you know, come and stay in motels, hotels, uh, condos, or whatever. They get the sand in their shoes, and, and they, it just brings them back. They love it. Little River Ward and Sewer Company was, we had an, we had an organization called Little River Improvement Association. Well, I was president of the Little River Improvement Association, and we, with a lot of help from a lot of people, we decided to, to do the water system. So when it got the water system pretty well built, I give up the Improvement Association's president and took over the water company's president. And whenever we got it built, I had to give that up because somebody had to operate it. And so I was the operator. And, uh, I made a big hundred dollars a month. And I got it on his feet, or we got it on his feet. We were told by, of course, we didn't have it. We had less than 100 customers whenever we put water in the lines. We had 10 miles of line. Had water line from the state line to Nixon's Crossroads. But, and I, I, I put a lot of water taps in for the few people that, were, that would take water. I put it in for them. And not half of them I never get paid for. But I, we got it going. Church of the Lost and Found. Uh, Beaver Greenway, which was an old shagger from back in the 50s, and, and uh, he, uh, uh, he was here and, and decided, uh, several people asked him if uh, uh, he would maybe get them together and talk about the book and uh, uh, the Bible, and, and he said, sure. So uh, he started uh, having a little service at a table at the, my pavilion uh, uh, about eight years ago, and uh, he had seven people at the time, and uh, now it's grown to uh, probably 400 people uh, come down every Sunday on the pavilion, and they come on the deck, and uh, we have... Uh, the, the heaters out there and they bundle up and he stands up for an hour and, and uh, preaches and it's touched a lot of hearts and, and it's helped a lot of people that was on the wrong track. Uh, and, uh, and we just think it's a blessing that uh, it's grown so much and that we think that it's, uh, uh, it's, it's something that, that intended to happen. I know the big boxes and the big things, I, I know there's a place for them, but the little man who stood by and who gave credit to people, Mr. G, when we came back from Columbia and had basically nothing to start a house with and have, got a little house and, and didn't have much furnishings and so forth, which were the hand-me-downs from here and there, we didn't have a refrigerator, we didn't have a washing machine, we didn't have an air conditioner in that little house. We went to Dew Company, and Mr. Dew let us take home. He brought to our house in a truck those appliances and a washing machine. We didn't pay one cent down on those. We didn't have any money extra. Carlton was trying to get set up in the office. He had no books. He had nothing, you know, didn't have nothing beyond the top right on the straight chairs, basically, to start. But Mr. Dew let us have those things on credit, which I know he has done for upteen hundreds and maybe thousands of people in this area. And we all, we told him, we will pay you back. 
we will pay you back as soon as we can, as much as we can. He said, whatever you, however you do it is fine. Some months we could give him more, some months we could give him only five or ten dollars. But we paid him on a regular basis with no note sign, no security agreement sign, nothing except our word to him. And those people like that who made the speech, a lot of them have been forgotten. And I think that is a shame on the North Myrtle Beach citizens who, who benefited from the generosity of people. And he's the only one that I can tell you. But I know personally because he put a washing machine in my house from washing my baby's diapers. <laughs> So as you can see, we're hard at work documenting history for the future North Myrtle Beach Area Historical Museum. And here's one more fact, we need you. Come join us in our effort to preserve North Myrtle Beach Area history.